<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and right here in front of us, we have a Xbox One X. This belongs to one of my friends here, Adam Korlick, and he's a fellow YouTuber who is wanting his Xbox One upgraded. So that's what we're going to do and use this tutorial for that opportunity. We're going to be taking the original hard drive on this console and we're going to be upgrading it to a one terabyte solid state drive. Now there's multiple different configurations you can do if you just want to swap it out with another hard drive, if you want to increase your hard drive size, or if you want to even just upgrade to a SSD, you're more than welcome to. This tutorial and this method is going to work across all three variants of the Xbox One. That means the original, the S, and the X will all work with this same method. The only difference is going to be you're going to have to take each one apart differently because they're going to be different models. On top of that, I do want to say getting into this tutorial that I only have one model right here, which is the X, obviously. So I'm not going to be going into detail as to how to take this console apart. There are several fantastic resources online showing how to do that both written and visual and even both if you really want that so i'd recommend checking out something like that and getting your console taken apart just far enough to get to the hard drive before you follow along with the rest of this tutorial so there's going to be a few things we'll need we of course need the xbox one console does not matter which one you have as long as you have an xbox one console that you can take apart safely that's all good we're also going to need our internal drive that we're going to replace. So this currently has the stock one terabyte hard drive in here, and we're going to replace it with a one terabyte solid state drive. Now the easily supported sizes are 500 gigabytes, one terabyte, and two terabyte. It is not at all advised to use another size like a terabyte and a half or three or four terabytes. Just stick to 500 gigs, one terabyte, or two terabyte for your hard drive, that's just going to make it easier, and it's going to be much easier supported when we're using the script here. We're also going to need something to hook it up to our PC. So of course, you can hook this up internally for this, but that's going to be a little bit annoying, so if you're like me and you just want to do it through USB, you can use any type of SATA to USB adapter. Uh, this is what I use, and I'm going to put it down below in the description. This is just a USB 3.0 adapter that takes any type of IDE or SATA interface and then adapts it to USB 3.0 to make it easy enough. For our final piece of hardware, we also need a USB flash drive of some kind, which is at least 8 gigabytes in size. We must format this to NTFS, and we're going to load a update file on here, which we are going to be putting on the console. So if you follow along with this exact tutorial, that's more than welcome. However, for this system, I'm not going to be backing up any of the data off of the internal drive. So if you don't care about any of the data, or if your internal drive is broken, you can follow along with this just fine. However, if you want to back up your data using the script on here, uh, you can adapt this tutorial for that when we get to that step. I'm just not going to cover that. I'm going to be setting up this hard drive as a brand new blank hard drive or solid state drive, I guess we can say. And I have been mentioning scripts here as well too. There are going to be some scripts on our PC that we're going to use. Now, I'm going to be doing this on Windows, and if you want to do this on Windows, you have to use Windows 10. But you can either use Windows 10 or you can use Linux. If you're going to be use Linux, again, you can adapt this video to your liking, but I'm not going to be explicitly covering that. So now that we have everything set up, all the prerequisite stuff here, let's go ahead and work on getting our hard drive configured or our replacement drive, which is our solid state drive. So for this, I'm going to unbox this, get it hooked up to our adapter right here, and then get it hooked up to our PC. Before we move over there, I just want to show how easy this is. Again, you can take an adapter, which will be something like this. It will need power. It will need a connection to your PC. But this is just as easy as taking the SATA interface right here, take your new drive, and hook it up like that. That's about all you need to do. So let's go ahead and move this to our PC. All right, so over at the PC, there's going to be links for the downloads down below in the description. But first of all, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to Xfix, otherwise known as Ty1976, over on GBA Temp. He goes by Xfix on YouTube, and I know he's been a viewer on here for a while, but 
I know he had brought these scripts to my attention that he has been writing and maintaining, and these just make the hard drive upgrade process so much easier for a Xbox One system. So this main thread is going to be linked down below in the description and we can come over here and you're more than welcome to read more on it but if you're just wanting to get the download you can download the latest zip file right here and you can also check out the google drive for an optional download although it is optional i am going to download it and i'm going to show you how to set this up so first of all let's grab the hdd master script by just clicking on the zip. It's going to bring you to a download page which you can just click download now and download this somewhere you can easily find it. There's also going to be MD5 checksums here, which I would recommend doing a MD5 check of your zip to make sure it downloaded properly. So just keep this in mind, we can use that. But for our optional download, let's move to the Google Drive. Over at the Google Drive, which Xfix has provided, the optional download here is the boot animation. Now the boot animation is when you turn on your system and you see the Xbox One boot up screen and all that fun stuff. When we set up our Xbox One again, it's not going to have that until the next time it updates. If you want to, you can download and put in the boot anim yourself. It's completely optional, but we'll go ahead and do it just for extra steps here. So here you can just go to boot anim and here, OG and S, this is for the Xbox One and the Xbox One S, and X is for the Xbox One X. So you want to go to your respective console, and then download this bootanim.dat file. I'm just going to right click, and download. For our last step here, I would recommend grabbing the MD5 checksum for your zip download. So I know I downloaded the Master 9, just grab one of these checksums, and you can double click it, right click, and copy to get this series of numbers and letters, and then use your favorite MD5 checking platform or program. For this, I'm going to use Online MD5 just because it's really easy to use. So here we go, we have Online MD5. You want to check MD5, compare with, paste in your series here, and then you want to either drag and drop in your zip file or choose it from here. I just opted to drag and drop it in, and as you can see, these two are matching, and I have a green check mark, meaning my zip file has downloaded with no issue. So awesome, everything is looking good so far. So now wherever you saved your files, you should have a zip, and you might have a bootanim.dat file if you chose to download this. For your zip file, right click and extract it here. It's going to extract into its own folder, and when you come in here, there's going to be Linux and Win. Again, if you're going to use Linux for this, completely up to you. You can try and adapt this video to your usage. I'm not going to be covering that. I'm going to be covering Win. So the script that we're going to be running is this create Xbox drive GUI.bat script. And as you can see, you're able to see all of the file name extensions on my installation. If you do not see these on Windows, you'll need to go up to view and tick file name extensions. As you can see, when I disable it, it looks something like this, and that can be confusing. So you want to enable these, and you want to launch the bat file. But before we do that, let's make sure we take our new drive we want to set up and hook it up to our PC. So I've just hooked up my solid state drive, and on Windows, you want to look for either disk management or create and format hard disk partitions, just to make sure it's setting up. So I'm going to click on this here, and you're probably going to get something telling you to initialize a disk. We do not want to do any of this yet. If you see this, just click on cancel. So once everything populates, you can scroll down here, and these are all the disks I have on my PC, but this one, disk five, this is unknown, unallocated, and I know for a fact this is my SSD. So we don't want to touch anything on here yet, but go ahead and keep disk management running. So now that we have everything hooked up and ready to go, let's go ahead and grab the create Xbox drive GUI.bat, and we need to right click this and run it as administrator. If it asks you for a admin prompt, you want to say yes. And after a few seconds, this PowerShell window should pop up just fine. If for whatever reason that does not pop up or work properly, this is also what you can do. On Windows, you can come up to the address bar, click on this, and then when it gives you the full path, you want to copy this out 
And if you are on your C drive, if this is where you saved it to, you don't need to change anything, but you might need to change to another drive if you've saved it to another drive. Next up, you want to open up command prompt. So look up command prompt or CMD, then right click and run as administrator. If it asks you for a prompt, say yes. And here we don't have to change the drive letter. If you have this saved to another drive, you just want to type in that drive letter. So mine would be, let's say G colon, and it will change it to the G drive. But that is not mine. I'm on the C drive here. And to accept that command, you need to hit enter after typing. So to change your directory, you need to type in C D space, and then right click and paste, and then hit enter. Now, next up, we need to type in the bat file. Now, if you're doing it this way and you're in this directory here, you can type in create, and then as a shortcut, hit the tab button and hit it again, hit it again, and there we go. We want to create Xbox drive GUI.bat, and then hit the enter key, and it accomplishes the same thing. So that's just another alternative way of getting there if the first method does not work. So now let's follow along with our script here. Everything is looking good. Administrative permissions confirmed. Let's click on next. And here we are going to do a replace upgrade without a working original drive. You can check all of these others right here and do all this other fun stuff, but I'm not going to be using the original drive. So this would be if you want to set up a completely brand new drive and it's going to look like you are initializing your console for the first time. So click on A, and then here you need to select which drive you are using. So I know for a fact mine is five because we already found it. As you can see, it is drive five within the disk management. And over here, it is the WDC and it's about one terabyte. So I know this is it. So click on whichever drive you're using. And here it's going to erase all data on this target. Continue. We are going to say yes to this. And now we need to pick how we want to set this up. So again, I only recommend doing these standard sizes on here. And since I have a one terabyte drive, I'm going to do one terabyte. And now let it do its thing. Now you'll probably notice you're going to get a lot of prompts like this asking you to format your disk. Do not touch any of these yet. Let the script finish working. So now it has finished up everything. As you can see, it looks good. All the five partitions were created, they were labeled, there's been letters assigned to them, and everything looks good here. So this took about two minutes. You can click on finish, and that's it, it exited out. So you can either type in exit and then enter, or you can just hit close right here. I'm just going to do exit to close out of that. So any of these that are asking you to format, you want to cancel out of them. Now go back over to your disk management and disk five should look quite different. We're going to have one, two, three, four, five partitions right here. And that unallocated partition, that's fine, just don't touch it. But that's how it should look. If you look at your drives within Windows, you should also have one, two, three, four, five blank partitions for your Xbox One drive. That is totally fine. So now we need to safely eject our properly configured drive. Once this has been ejected, since I have a power switch on mine, I'm just going to physically switch my USB adapter off. And that is all we need the new drive for. So next up, we need the flash drive for this because we need to download OSU1 and we need to set that up on here. You'll first need to take your USB external drive that you are using. This would be your flash drive like I recommended. And again, it needs to be at least eight gigabytes in size. Right click, check on the properties and mine is FAT32. You have to have this be NTFS. So for this, make sure you back up any data that you care about off of this. Now, right click, format. Once you're ready to format it here, select NTFS, default allocation size, quick format is fine, and we should be good at this point here. So now our flash drive is configured. We now need to download the OSU1 update. So we're actually going to download this directly from Microsoft here, but we're going to perform an offline system update. 
So what you want to do is go down to the steps that say download offline system update file OSU1 and then find the download for OSU1. Save it somewhere you can easily find it and please wait a little bit here because this is about a five gigabyte file so it's going to take a bit to download. All right, so once you have this OSU1 zip file downloaded, I'd recommend right click and extract it here or you can extract it into its own folder. It is going to be easier to extract it on your PC first. In here, you're going to find a cache system update folder, just like that. And we can either copy it or move it. I'm just going to move it here. But you can cut or copy it, the system update folder itself. Now go to your flash drive. And again, your flash drive must be formatted to NTFS, file system NTFS. Now go in here and paste. And now we need to wait a few minutes for this large archive to transfer over. All right, so that was just finished copying. So this is how your USB drive should look like. Again, NTFS, and when you go in here, you have your system update folder with all the required files. We don't need to worry about those. So now with that done, let's go ahead, eject our USB drive, and move back over to our console. And let's go ahead and work on getting our Xbox One taken apart. All right, at least for the Xbox One X, here is a tip. Of course, you'll need to take off the two boards that are on the sides and remove all these silver screws, but these four black screws right here around the X for the X clamp, we don't have to remove those unless you're going to be repasting the APU, which we're not going to cover in here. Uh, this is just, you know, kind of a tip for anybody who's going to be taking this apart. But these four black screws, they can stay here for now. We don't need to remove those to get to the actual console. All right, so just another tip for the Xbox One X and maybe any other system you're going to be doing here. This is about as far as we need to go. We just need to take out the hard drive itself right here, which there is kind of a big assembly on this, so I am going to disconnect it. But this is the farthest you really need to go unless you want to do any further maintenance to your console. Just as long as you can access that hard drive, you're fine. All right, so now that we have the assembly for the hard drive removed, there's going to be four big screws that you can see around here. And there's also going to be four little screws, at least this is on the Xbox One X. You're just going to have to remove all of those because we need to take out this hard drive completely and pop in whichever new drive you're going to be setting up. All right, so all the screws have been removed. So as you can see, this is the second part of the plastic. We're just going to remove it like that. And this here is going to be the interface you need to connect up to the motherboard from the hard drive. So you just want to gently remove that. There you go. And here is our old drive, which we no longer need. Now we just work backwards where we're going to take our new drive, pop it in like so, make sure that's snug, and then put all the rest of the components back together.
And just like before, we want to make sure the drive is snug in here once screwed back in, make sure it's going into all the through holes and then connect it back up. Now again, I can only speak for the Xbox One X, but when putting it back together, uh, on the bottom here, once you put this part back on, uh, I like to put these two screws back in, the only two screws that are on the bottom here, before we flip it upside down, or technically right side up. It's kind of both at the same time. Remember that the longer screw is going to go over here, while as the shinier, smaller, flat screw is going to go on the right. So we will need the bottom portion for this when we're going to be partially disassembling but using the console. So make sure you put the console with everything here gently back into this plastic bottom piece. You'll also want to be very careful with the two ribbons right here, these two connectors. Do not damage them, do not try to pin them, uh, because we are going to need to use them both temporarily and for the remainder of this console's life. So with the Xbox One X, it helps to kind of push it down at an angle, get everything lined up here, and then once everything is snug, we can go ahead and work on getting everything reconnected. Now when we use the console at this moment, it's strictly going to be temporary just to get it configured, set up, and make sure everything is working. So we don't need to put in any of the other screws yet. We do need to make sure that this is connected down here. And then we're going to need to take both of the boards that we removed, these communication boards, and hook them back up. Again, we don't have to screw them in, but we do need to hook them up. So here we go, we have it to the point where we need it. Everything is there, we don't need all these screws in because I'm gonna get back in here again. The only thing I'd fully recommend screwing down is going to be the actual assembly itself, but we already did that, we don't need to screw this in any further. And again, we have both boards connected and you know the connectors there that are required. Plug it into power, plug it into HDMI, that's all we need and then turn on your system. Now you're immediately going to get this error, and so far this is actually good. It's saying restart the Xbox or troubleshoot, and you should get something like an E106. So now if you're getting this, come down to troubleshoot and press A. Now we need to reset this Xbox to factory default. So this is going to wipe everything on here and the drive is blank, which is why it is giving us this error. But we also need to reset the system itself. So come down to reset this Xbox and press A, and we want to remove everything. So after it tries to reset and such, it is going to bring us to this screen again. Go down to troubleshoot, press A, and now we want to turn off this Xbox. So press A on here. It's now recommended at this step to completely remove power from the system and let it sit here for about a minute or so before plugging it back in. Also, if you were at that part and for whatever reason your system couldn't gracefully shut down, you're just going to have to force it to shut down and then unplug your system for about a minute, plug it back in. So now after plugging it back in, you could just turn it on and go through the troubleshooting process, but I'd rather just go straight to the recovery menu. So if you've never done recovery mode, you're going to have to hold down the eject button, hold down the sync button, and then turn the power on. And you're going to hear the first power chime, and then you want to let go when you hear the second power chime. So that's what we're going to do here. Hold down both these buttons and turn on the console. And there we go, we now let go. So as you can see, it brought us straight to the troubleshooting screen this time around, and now you need to take your USB drive and plug it into a USB port. If done so correctly, that means it was formatted and the folders in the right place, then offline system update should become available. So you want to come over here and press A on offline system update. So here we go. This is going to go through the three step process of downloading, applying, verifying the update on your system. If your system is out of date, this will bring it up to the latest dashboard update. But more importantly, this is going to initialize the new drive with all of the proper operating system related files that we need 
to actually utilize our Xbox One. All right, so here we go. After everything has been initialized, you can now hook up your controller and continue on. And at this point, you can hook up your internet if you are going wired on here. If you're doing wireless, then it is going to prompt you for that network setup, but just go ahead and initialize your console. All right, so after signing in and initializing, as you can see, the system is working just fine. Thank goodness here. Uh, I'm going to come up to which section was it? System, storage, and there's absolutely nothing on here, but you all will see it right off the bat. We have 780.2 gigabytes free out of 780.9 gigabytes. Unfortunately, that's going to be expected with a one terabyte drive. There's a few gigabytes, well, a few hundred gigabytes, I'd say, that you don't directly have access to, but that's going to be fine. That's expected there. The point is we now have a one terabyte solid state drive installed and working just fine on this Xbox One console. So yes, this is a black screen you are looking at. This isn't an editing mistake. At this point, we are done. The Xbox One is upgraded. We're good to go. We can close up shop and be completely done here. However, you might be noticing that just like on this black screen that you are seeing, you are also noticing this on your Xbox One whenever you turn it on if you use energy saving mode. Well, that is to be expected. You see, as I mentioned earlier, the boot anim file does not come bundled in with the offline system update. So when you boot up your system, it's going to look something like this. And there's two ways we can fix that. One of which is just wait for a update through Xbox Live to come out and apply that. Or two, we can manually copy over that file. So this is going to be the completely optional step. If this does not bug you, you are done. Congratulations, you're ready to move on. However, if you are going to want that boot animation immediately, let's go ahead, turn off the system. And this here is exactly why I suggested waiting to put all these screws back in here. I've just unplugged all of this and here I'm going to start removing all the components because again, we need to get to this drive one last time. All right, so when you hook your drive back up to your PC, it's going to look a little bit different here. We now have data in the U, W, and X partitions. System Update 2 is not going to have anything just yet. And user content, this is where all your games and apps and all that fun stuff go. But the one we're looking at is the X partition. So you just go into System Update, and there's A and B folders. In the A folder, you copy in bootanim.dat, and you do the same thing in the B folder, bootanim.dat. So you gotta copy it twice. But again, this is how it should look on your PC. You hook up your internal drive, you go to the X partition, A, bootanim is now going to be there, and B, bootanim is going to be here. So that is it. That should be the very last time you hook up your internal drive to your PC. So now at this point, if everything is working, you can go ahead and just disconnect your drive from your PC, pop it back into your Xbox One, and close it all up. All right, so here we are turning on the system, and check this out. That is much different than before. We actually got the little 4K startup animation, as well as this loading animation here. Yes, this is included in the boot anim, but that is about it at this point. So congratulations, even if you stopped at that last little bit or you continued on, you should now have a successfully replaced hard drive, solid state drive, or even upgraded drive on your Xbox One. So hopefully this video has helped you all out and I want to give a giant shout out and thank you to Xfix who, again, I know he has really been maintaining these scripts, doing a great job, always finding improvements on them, always publishing his findings, whatever interesting things he sees on there. And he was the one who brought this to my attention a few years ago. I just haven't really done this until a few months ago. But yeah, it is about as painless as that. Hopefully this helped out. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone.